And that every time I come up here, I start majorly adjusting this thing. It's a wee bit of a OCD thing, so I'll have to keep with tradition here. <laughs> keep that going. Keep everything the way I want it. So, it's good to see you. Um, no, I have not been to the sunbeds. And no, I do not use fake tan. <laughs> this is au naturel, whenever the sun comes out in this country. Um, that's just what happens, so I am guess I'm blessed with that. <laughs> you may have noticed uh, a word come up this morning quite a few times already. Um, it was the word agreement. And I really felt stirred that um, just even over this past few weeks with what Aaron has shared with us, that the Lord really sort of impart to me um, this whole uh, idea, the truth really, uh, spiritual law of of us coming into agreement. And that's what I would like to speak about this morning. So if you have a Bible with you, and you can turn to Matthew chapter 18, that's what we're going to speak on this morning. In light of, uh, of the vision that's been cast and shared over this past few weeks, and I guess um, I want to just open this up and give a sort of a, a biblical framework for it. Um, and then I'd like to share a few testimonies, a few personal testimonies. Um, which you can relate to here, hopefully, and, uh, and, and, and we'll see what God wants to do uh, from that time. So let me just pray. So Lord, we just, uh, just quiet our hearts in your presence right now, and we just thank you for the blessing of being together as a, as a family of families, as the family of God. Yeah. And we know there's other places where this is not so easy to do. We thank you that we have your word in front of us on our phones. We have multiple different versions and it's so readily available to us. And so God, we just thank you for these, um, these blessings that we, we sometimes take for granted. So God, I pray, just as Tana's reminded us, that we would have ears to hear this morning. Um, not just ears to listen, but actually ears to hear what you're saying. And so God, come by the power of your spirit and speak to all of our hearts. Change and transform us. Have your way, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So Matthew chapter 18. Um, if you turn back actually to uh, Matthew 16, and as many of you know, the Gospel of Matthew is the Gospel of the Kingdom. That's how it's often referenced. And in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, if any of you were out at the Glebe, uh, you will have heard Aaron share this before, um, this passage where, where Jesus uh, is, is asking the question, who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter uh, says, well, some people say this and some people say that. And some people say you're Elijah and a prophet and so on. And he says, no, but who do you say that I am? And he says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And verse 18 of chapter 16 says, and I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you. The keys of the kingdom of heaven, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then if you turn across to Matthew chapter 18, you'll see that this promise uh, of, of Jesus is, has, has been uh, widened out, if you like, from being uh, spoken out to Peter, to the other apostles, and in turn, to all the representatives of the kingdom. And so that includes us. Matthew 18. I'll, I'll actually start in at verse 15. Where Jesus is, is uh, referencing. If a brother sins against you. What is it that you're to do? If a brother sins against you. Go and tell him his fault. Between you and him alone. I think Aaron even mentioned this last week that we want to be a place here that when there is something 
between us. It doesn't get swept under the carpet and then gossiped about behind the scenes. That we go to one another because we're to speak the truth in love to one another. So you go to him or her alone. And if he listens, listen to this, if he listens to you, you've gained your brother. That is a a really interesting statement there. You see, we all have blind spots. And if we are brothers and sisters in Christ and we have an understanding that we love one another, somebody should be able to come to me and say, do you know what? You see, when you said that, you are a bit off there. And maybe we have a blind spot and we don't realize. And we say, okay, I'll I'll take that from you because I know that you love me. And we work our way through it. And so if he or she listens, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence or two of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. And then these are really the verses I'm focusing on for this morning. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. And so I really want to focus in on verse 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth, about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. You see, Jesus has opened up uh, the truth, this this spiritual law that uh, from, from Peter to the other apostles and in turn to all of us, that whatever we uh, bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven and really we can we can put that in a way that's easy for us to understand because there is a precondition in this and so we can read this uh, verse 18 as whatever we bind on earth will already have been bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth will already have been loosed in heaven and so the precondition to all of this is Jesus is talking to his apostles is that their lives are surrendered to him that's the precondition and so as we ask we're asking according to the will of god okay so whenever it says anything it means you can ask anything according to my will if you turn across to the next page to verse 20 we see Uh, sorry, to chapter 20 of Matthew's Gospel, we see an example of someone who uh, the Bible talks about asks amiss. They ask with the wrong motives. And it was the mother of James and John. Verse 20, chapter 20, verse 20. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked for something. And he said to her, what do you want? And she said to him, Say that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right hand and one on your left, in your kingdom. And Jesus answered, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? And they said, We are able. (laughs) So there's an example of someone that's asking amiss. And so when we, we come to consider these verses when we uh, think about the invitation as the family of God to ask in agreement with heaven according to the will of God for anything and we come into agreement there's a multiplication on what we're asking for there's a power in agreement and that's what we're looking at this morning James chapter 4 And verse 3, when you ask and you do not receive, you're asking with the wrong motives so that you might spend what you get on your own pleasures. Mm -hmm. And so in the kingdom of God, 
We're always talking here at Centre 61 about family, about the importance of gathering, about the body of Christ, about the diversity of the body, about how God's made us unique and different. You are not to conform to be like me, thank goodness you say. I'm not to conform to be like you. God has made us unique, but there is this word that we are always using, the word alignment. We need to come into alignment with the will of God. To see the kingdom of God come on earth as it is in heaven. And so that's a different thing altogether. And we've seen that. We've seen when we've come together. And that's what I want to testify. And I'm excited to do very soon. To tell you about some of the times when we've come into agreement with heaven. And we've seen breakthrough. And so I just want to cover very quickly this this, uh, spiritual law of, of the power of agreement. Do you know, sometimes we like to cherry pick from God's word. We like to say, well, we like that bit, not so keen on that bit. I think I'll, I'll stay over on this bit. And that's not what it is. We need that word alignment. We need to come into the plumb line of, of Jesus. And we need to follow him. Yes. We don't get away with, you know, cherry picking and saying, well, I'm not so keen on that. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of an individual. I don't want to gather. I don't want to. You know, I'm just doing my own thing here. How many times do you hear people say that now? And I'm totally convinced that we need to fight for unity in this day now more than ever before. Amen. Go and get your tickets for new. Go and get them. Because what we had before, and this is a generalization, I'll give you that. We had churches coming together in all different places. And they met together but there was disunity in the church. Amen. But they still met. <laughs> now, quite a lot of people haven't come back to church, and so there's disunity, but they're not even gathering. Amen. And that's what we've got. We need to gather together as the body of Christ. It was just a few months ago that, uh, that I think it was Phil and, and, and Aaron, Mark and I were talking, and... Uh, Mark reminded us that, you know, some of these testimonies that we had and breakthroughs that we had, they were when we were together. You know, and and we read about that when the disciples were together, when they were in the upper room, when they were here, something happened. And so there is real power in agreement. There is real power in unity. So I mentioned this whole idea of we can't take shortcuts with God. (laughs) Living in agreement is really important if we're going to pray in agreement. Living in agreement is not screaming in rage at our children, picking out all their faults and shortcomings and them saying, we agree in prayer for good grades for you. That doesn't work. Living in agreement is not fighting with our spouse, publicly humiliating them, complaining about them in front of our children, and then turn around and ask our kids to show respect to mum or dad. It doesn't work. There was an old preacher years ago and uh, he had this little saying when he was teaching us something like that and he used to say, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. And my dad picked that little statement up as he often did and does and just repeated it. So whenever we were getting into something, he would say, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. And so we can say that with some of these things in the way that we live. Living in agreement is not as the body of Christ Gossiping about one another, heaping shame and condemnation on one another, and then agree when prayers of blessing are prayed over that person. We can't have the contradiction. We can't be pulling one way and then the other. God knows our heart. Living in agreement is not being full of bitterness and then agreeing in prayer when somebody is praying forgiveness over a person that's wronged them. And so we must, as the the children 
uh, of God come into alignment with King Jesus, allow ourselves to be made more like him. And so there, there, is, a, there is a general agreement. There is a surrender. There is a, there is a moving from glory to glory as we continue on this journey. A few uh, weeks ago, um, I was up uh, at the North Coast with uh, a couple of friends. Some of the guys here uh, met Matthew and David uh, not that long ago. But uh, David had a friend over from England, a business uh, colleague, a real eccentric guy, a real brilliant guy. But he's one of these guys who just asks you tons and tons of questions. And whenever you give him an answer, he uses your answer to ask another question. You know, it was a bit like a child. <laughs> so he's asking me all these <coughs> I was getting sort of worn out and he was around around the whole sort of subject of um, you know faith and and uh, surrender and, and all of that and you know he, he he kind of you know asked this question around but like did you really surrender all to God you know you know and, and I said yes I did and he kind of oh you know like but I can you can you say that and and, and I said yeah I can because on, on my wedding day, I stood and I made vows. And I made my vows to my wife. And I meant them. I meant them as much as I can mean them. And I, am a, uh, I, may, I have faults and failings just like anyone else. But that time of surrender to Jesus, and I have slipped and fallen and made mistakes and all the rest of it. But I, I meant it. And... and, and in this place this morning, don't let that lie from the enemy take hold that somehow you can't hold on to this. Just give him your yes and continue to give him your yes. And when you make mistakes, get up again, repent and, and go after him with everything Amen. you've got. You, uh, you give him your yes and you don't turn back from it. That's right. In verse 19, that little, little word, agree that word that we're we're really focusing on this morning in the greek it, it is a uh, symphonio which comes from the root word symphony and so if you can imagine us here this morning in agreement our hearts aligned in agreement pleading before the throne of god in agreement for something according to the will of god God will answer that prayer. Now I just want to bring something which should bring clarity to us because we, God's placed us in his divine wisdom within time. And God operates outside of time and in time. So when we pray in accordance to God's will and when there's agreement behind that, we believe that God has answered that prayer. And we will see the fulfillment of it in his good time. And so we have to be willing to take those steps. Let's say we're praying for a loved one that we want to see commit their life to Jesus. We pray for them. Is that in the heart of God? Are we praying that according to the will of God? Yes, we are. He is not willing that any should perish, Amen. but that all should come to a knowledge of salvation. So when we pray that prayer, we are praying according to the will of God. We have got the full support of heaven behind us. But how God answers that prayer in his perfect timing, we trust him and we leave that to him. And so we move forward from that point Believing that God will answer that prayer. And we our prayer changes not to this constant pleading for God to do that. But God how are you going to answer that? How should I position myself? Can you tell me when to speak? When to be quiet? Can you prompt me by the power of your spirit? When we pray. I'll, I'll give you another example. If you want to pray this morning for yourself that you would be free from debt is that a prayer that god will answer are we praying according to the will of god yes we are are you ready for how god will answer that prayer 
Are you ready to change your spending habits? Are you ready to give up on some things that you need to give up? Are you, are you ready for God to do the work in your heart that needs to be done so that you can stay debt free? And so God, we get, we get stuck in this trap of, oh, God's not answering my prayers and things. When we come together and we pray, God, it's truth. He will answer anything that we ask. <coughs> and so we need to know that heaven is behind us and we have authority. We have this spiritual law. But this beautiful uh, spiritual law of multiplication comes when we do it in agreement. So I want to read a verse. Maybe just don't take the time to turn to it. But it's in uh, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30. And of course you all know the, the checkered past that the Israelites have. And we've spoken about that numerous times. And at one time they're following God and they're seeing triumph and seeing blessing. Seeing the walls of Jericho fall down. All of this. Uh, and at other times it's just a disaster. And they're getting taken into captivity and things are going wrong and they're worshipping false gods and they're making idols and all of this stuff is happening. And so they have this, uh, you know, when, when we see them, if we're honest, we see ourselves. We see the way that we live and behave. And I think Aaron said a couple of weeks ago about our big thick heads or something like that. <laughs> and that's what we're a bit like. You know, we, we two minutes down the line, we've forgotten about it again. Now Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30 says, How could one have chased a thousand and two have put ten thousand to flight? And there is contained in that verse the multiplication that comes in agreement. Unless their rock had sold them, for their rock is not as our rock are their enemies or by themselves. You see, God in his design, family, relationships together, agreement, that, that's his thing. What does the enemy come to do? Steal, kill and destroy. His tactic is divide and conquer. And so he's always trying to divide. He will tell you, oh, you don't feel good this morning. I wouldn't bother going along to church. I wouldn't bother, uh, you know, meeting with that friend to pray. You know, whatever it might be, he, he seeks to bring in division, strife, anger, all of these things. And so we need to know that. We need to know that he is the enemy of our souls and he is out to destroy us. Amen. But Jesus came to give life and to yes. give it to the full. Yes. And so... We want to together step into agreement. My friend Alan Emerson is, is sharing a, a series right now at Emmanuel Church on blessed to be a blessing. That's brilliant. Because that's what we are. We're blessed to be a blessing. It's better to give than receive. And so the, the, the kingdom of the culture, the culture of the kingdom that we have been brought into is, is against the grain of the world. It's always going against the grain. Amen. The world says, trample over, survival of the fittest, push somebody down so you can get up. And the culture of the kingdom is completely the opposite of that. And so as we come to consider this morning um, these verses on the power of agreement, I hope that the Spirit of God will have brought either revelation or a reminder to us that it's when we're together when we pray, the power of agreement, this, this design that God has, has allowed in his perfect will, um, in his perfect wisdom, is that when we come together, he multiplies the blessing. I want to share a couple of stories and I don't want to run out of time because I think this is important this morning. You know, as Aaron's been sharing the vision over the last few weeks uh, and done a great job of it and it's, it's not easy because how do, you, how do you sort of put 
down on paper a God-sized vision. It's not easy. And I don't want any of us to think that this is uh, our thing. This is the leadership thing. This is God's thing. Yeah. And we're brought, yeah. we're, we're being invited into it. You, God has brought you along here. And the last thing that we want is in 20 years time that you're sitting down there and I'm standing up here. Yeah. And, and you're still just listening to me. I mean, I don't want that. You definitely don't want that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> and so we want to see you grow. We want to see you released. And we'll still be together. We'll still meet up. We'll still be, but things are going to happen. And God's going to bring transformation to communities and uh, to your families. And we want to be disciples that make disciples. And so I wanted to share a story uh, to glorify God and to bring encouragement to you uh, about way, way back at the very start, the very start of this, this, whole, this whole thing. And I'll not get too much into the back story, but we had come through a really difficult time personally. Uh, Sarah and I, um, with the loss of a child and, and, and our parents and all of that, and it, was, it just seemed to come one, one thing after another. And really, all the stuff that I was striving after, it just all of a sudden didn't mean too much. Um, it just didn't seem important. And yet you ask that question, what is it all about? What is this all about? And in the midst of all of that, I've been a believer for years, but kind of was going through the, 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 the motions of that, just checking in and checking out. and. And all of that, and I love Jesus, but I guess I'd settle for the sort of status quo of, of well, this, this is it. And it was in the midst of all of that uh, shaking, which there's been a big shake in this last few years, that I started to question things where before I, I didn't. And God started to minister to me. I'm so thankful that he is so very patient and long-suffering with me. But he started to minister to me and had a real encounter with God uh, that was really powerful, um, was was life-changing. And it it involved a surrender, uh, which which I mentioned there earlier on. But in the midst of that, I sort of got... uh, I'd known Mark for years and I got to... uh, I sort of met up with him again and, and strangely, un, kind of unbeknown to me, that he had gone through exactly the same thing. And so we kind of found ourselves in this place of like just this amazing revelation that God was giving um, about his kingdom and what the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom was. We had narrowed down in our understanding the gospel to be something less than what it really is and all of a sudden God had just opened up his kingdom to us and it, we were blown away and it was really difficult to to communicate that to people that didn't get it and didn't maybe want to get it and going through all of that and anyway some of these things that were happening uh, to me I, I didn't even know what way I could even explain it to Sarah and uh, she knew there was some things going on and I really do believe that God needed to do a lot more in, in me than he needed to do in her. But uh, she was out one night and it kind of came to this point where I was, you know, I, I knew the weight and what it meant to surrender all to God. I knew that my life was in his hands. And so the way I'd lived life up to that point, now I always say this, I wasn't in control, but I felt like I was. None of us are in control, but we can live life that we're controlling the whole thing. And so that's how I live. Whatever decisions were made, you know, we made them. And, and now I was kind of, in a way, because I'm married, the two become one. I need to go to Sarah and say, you know, I've surrendered my life to Jesus completely. And that means that we don't know. I don't know what he's going to ask. I don't know. We, we might have to sell this house. We might be moving to the other side. Whatever. It's, it's, it's in his hands now. So we were going to kind of need to have this agreement in the house to move forward. 
And so I have this conversation with Sarah and she says, have you got your Bible from the day that we got married? I said, yeah, I think it's in my room. So I went into my room and I opened it up and on the front it said to Neil on our wedding day. But I quoted uh, Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16. And if anybody knows uh, that book, um, it's the story of, of Ruth and Naomi and this beautiful uh, relationship. And Ruth uh, says to Naomi that my God, your God will be my God and I'm going to go wherever you're going to go. And so there was this agreement. There was this uh, covenant that was made on our wedding day that still stood those years later. And so she was saying, in effect, I am in agreement with you. And just as she said that, we were in our kitchen, many of you have been there, sitting facing the fire, there was an audible sigh in the room. And Sarah had been out all night and she had just turned, returned home and Faith was only a baby and the pram was sitting in the corner. And I thought, oh dear, <laughs> have I forgotten to put Faith to bed? Or like, this is all in a split second. And then I remembered I did put her to bed and then I thought I must have heard that. And at that point, Sarah said, what on earth was that? And so we kind of sat there with the hairs in the back of our neck standing up. I walked around the, the kitchen island thinking one of the kids had somehow got up in the middle of the night and had fallen asleep behind there or something. Walked around, came back, sat down. There was nobody there. And so we just kind of looked at each other and pondered this in our hearts, as, as the word says about, uh, about Mary. The next day, I'm talking to, to Mark on the phone. And I said, you'll not believe what happened last night. Told him the story. And he was like, wow, it's amazing. Um, I said, well, what, what do you think is going on there? And he said, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. And, he, and then he just said something. And I really just felt that the, the Holy Spirit just confirmed that what, what he said was true. He said, maybe it was your angel sighing with relief. When a couple have come in to agreement... And there was a sign, the Bible talks about signs and wonders, but these were signs, this was a sign that made us wonder. And it was so confirmational that we look back on some of the more difficult days and we remember that. And God is opening you up in his own way to the, the reality of the spiritual realm. An audible sigh in the room of perhaps, I don't know, an angel sighing with relief. <sighs> they've got it <coughs> another story Come, moving forward a little bit as many of you know you've been out at the Glebe house where Aaron and Tana live again these wells that we're <coughs> stepping into this is one of them and, and, and the Glebe out there and an I was driving past one, one morning and really felt God highlight that this was one of those wells. And I kind of pondered that for a number of weeks and thought, maybe I'm just thinking about that because I'm previous with, with that place and all of that kind of thing. And talked back and forth to God and I wasn't getting left alone about it. And uh, I said, okay, Lord, if this is really you, I need confirmation. And I need you to confirm that or else I'm not moving forward because I'm not sure. And that evening I was talking to Aaron and he, sa he said that, that Tana and, and, and uh, he were going through um, different dreams that, that Tana had had when they'd moved here and, and that just that one stood out to them. And he sent it and emailed it across. Um, and I hadn't mentioned anything about the Glebe and there was this dream. And it just described the glebe to a T. It was just, that's what it was. And anyway, we decided to get together and pray about it and seek God's heart about it and all the rest of it. And it was over a, a very quick period of time, only a number of weeks. Um, there was one day that Aaron and Mark and I were uh, up at my house. And 
I knew that I was going to have to pick up the phone and physically start to do something about this if we were going to step into it. And so I needed confirmation. And Mark sort of tells the story. He didn't want to know. He, he wanted to go and get something to eat. He didn't want to be praying about that. And so I'm there going on about this. And Aaron's listening. And Mark's kind of thinking, where can we eat? And, uh, and then all of a sudden, he jumps up out of the chair. And I sort of like was thinking, What's he, why is he heading towards me? And he says, we need to lift up your arms. We need to lift up your arms. You and me, Aaron, we need to lift up your arms. And you need to pray. And before I knew it, they both lifted up my arms and this prayer just came out. It just came out. I don't know where it came from. It came from the, the heart of God. And I didn't pray that we would get the place or anything like that. I prayed for the family that owned it. Yeah. Yeah. And we sat down and we all kind of looked at each other like, what just happened there? And Mark said, that's it. That's it done. It's done. It's done. And I believed that. I totally believed that. I believed that, that was the truth, but I knew that I wasn't done. I knew I had a lot of different phone calls and stuff to make. So the place was sold. We prayed, should we, are we supposed to get the money for this? And maybe God's going to provide it. I don't know. The place ended up getting sold. Um, and a couple of people that we talked to were like, oh, well, that's that. Um, we believed that we were going to hear about it. And about three months went past, um, my next door neighbor arrived in the yard and said, uh, after a bit of small talk, and I'm standing freezing, he said, uh, I bought the Glebe house and I want to know, uh, do you want to like rent it off me or what? And, and, and that, it was just as simple as that. It was one of those, like, like it was 50 yards from where we were praying, where the guy lives. Yeah. And so these, these testimonies of agreement coming into agreement. And so I'm going to give you one more quick one. And it involves you all from a couple of weeks ago. During the service, I can't even remember who was sharing that morning. Um, but Sarai had had on her heart to go home. She hadn't been home for four and a half years. Yeah. And... Does God in his heart want her to be with her family? Yes, he does. Now, I don't know all the reasons why they couldn't get home. We know certainly over this past couple of years the reasons. <coughs> but I felt stirred to just get up and share the need and to come into agreement with the cry of Sarai and Simon's heart for them to get home. And so we did that, and you agreed, and you said amen. But not only that, because agreement goes further than simply saying amen. It means sometimes agreeing by putting your hand in your pocket and giving. That's agreeing. And you did that as well. And I think, if I can remember rightly, I said that we pray that they get there before May. And they're flying out tomorrow morning. And about two weeks back, I was asking Simon and he said, I don't know, it's not looking likely. And then all of a sudden, they got tickets and they were going. So praise God for answered prayer. Praise God for coming into agreement with one another and seeing breakthrough. I'm finished. I just want to quote Psalm 133 which loads of you will know. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. When we come together in unity, when we come together in agreement, God commands a blessing. There's a multiplication of blessing. Agreement and unity is a sign that you're not just covered by God, but that you're consecrated to him. What a picture 
of the bride of Christ. What a picture of the bride of Christ. That we're covered and consecrated to him. Amen. And so this morning, this is definitely spoken and been a reminder to me again as we go forward that we need to be in agreement. We need to move forward in a spirit of unity and agreement. There's plenty of place for diversity. There's definitely place for different opinions. That's not what we're talking about. You might like red, I might like blue, so on, or green or orange or whatever. Uh, <laughs> do you think? Um, no, I don't even think about that stuff. You know that? I got, I realized being in a mainly nationalist area, I had red, white and blue head covers in all my golf clubs. And it only dawned on me about six months down the line. I was thinking, the ball green. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think about that stuff. Um, Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's all history. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Aaron.